Hi, welcome to the Hello Darling Show. My name is Barbara McNaught and I will be introducing very special people with very special stories. Today our special guest is John Gardner from Brian Gardner Motors. Hello darling and welcome to the show. Hello darling, nice to see you Barbara. Thank you for coming here today. Brian Gardner Motors was founded by your father Brian Gardner who is now regarded in WA business community as a legend. He immortalized the phrase, don't pay through the nose. Tell us, Brian Gardner was he born and bred West Australian? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dad was born in Kalgoorlie in 1933. His father was a gold tributor, actually came from Bendigo. Um, and his father passed away in 35. And Dad was a sort of the after child, about 16 years after his last sister. So I don't know that he was planned. But just as well he came along because he had six children and none of his brothers and sisters ended up having any children. So um, that's how we continued the line. Otherwise, I think we, we would have stopped probably around about there. So Thank we, goodness. And we, we wouldn't have... The line. That's right. We wouldn't have you at the Hello Darling show. Yes. <laughs> John, may I ask you, your dad, Brian Gardner, how and when did he start car business? Okay, he started in the, um, I, I think around about 1960. Um, had a grocery shop with his, with his sister. And he, I think he quickly learned that, you know, selling things that you made a dollar out of at a time was a bit slow for him. So he wanted to get into a bulkier good sort of thing. And um, uh, he actually started with a family friend. And um, I don't think his family friend ran the business very much. He wasn't there, which is why he wanted dad or somebody like him to be Silent there. partner. And he, and he taught himself, frankly, a lot. He's a very good observer of things and, um, and a good student and a very, very disciplined man and was able to apply whatever he saw you know, to, to reality uh, just by being extremely disciplined and, and doing the same things every day that he knew would work. So um, that's very much how he, how he got it all up and going. And he, he did literally, from there, he actually ended up with his own small car yard. Um, and he started, uh, he literally started with a change in his pocket, Dad. So he um, didn't have a, a free kick or an inheritance or anything like that to help him. He just, just got started on his own. So. Well, how and when did you join car industry and follow your dad's footsteps because you are a media man. You came from media. Well, I quickly learned that if you're a DJ when you're about 17 or 18, Great. it's not a bad advantage to have. Um, and I was actually, I was in Alice Springs and, and I, so I graduated from, you know, working in a, in a bar playing music to actually working on the radio station. You didn't need to be so qualified then if you had a nice voice um, and you seemed to have your wherewithal about you, they'd, they'd give you a go. So I got into radio there in Alice Springs. Um, and I went to, I worked in Sydney and mainly here at 6IX in the 80s, uh, the Perth connection there. Uh, but it, during that time I also worked up at Atlantis Marine Park. I did about 2,500 live shows with children and animals, which are the two don't go on stage with. And uh, yes. that teaches you to ad lib a lot because you look around for the, the next animal behaviour and the animal's taken off and swimming in the pool and of course children are pretty yes. unpredictable. Um, so I did, did a lot of that sort of work and also a lot of nightlife producing entertainment and creating entertainment. Um, fashion parade, did a lot of, uh, you know, posted a lot of beauty co contests and all those sorts of things. And, um, yeah, and it was a fun life and it was very rewarding. And, and you know, I think you, you take your skills from all through your life into whatever you're doing today. And, and that, that's true of me. So I did that. And th uh, when I was uh, 33, so 1995, yes. I was probably my age, didn't I? Well, it's, it's uh, not that long ago. And yeah. it's okay for guys. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, so I got in with that then and uh, he just started me as a salesperson. I had to sort of work my way through and he didn't give me any free kicks. and. Um, which is great because, you know, when you, when you do get to where you're going, um, you can honestly say you earned it. And that's, um, that's one of those gifts you don't realise you're getting along the way, but later on you, you come to appreciate. So. Uh, are there any tips, like any memories that you would say, that's how I will do it with my son, or that's how I won't do it with my son, because that's how I did it with my dad, or how my dad, any, any special story? Or Look, I, think, I think this is the great conundrum for parents now. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't particularly like my childhood. My father was a pretty strong disciplinarian and what have you. Um, but I like how I've turned out. So now, it's worked. I'm not doing anything like that with my children. I think we're all probably a lot softer on our children now. And I, and I often wonder, well, if, if their childhood is so different to mine, what are they going to turn out like? I like the way I turned out through having had that discipline and what have you. Um, I mean, I'm still quite strong with my children, but I think we spend a lot more time with our children than perhaps our parents did and those sorts of things. So mm -hmm. what are we going to be, what are our children going to be like? I, I don't know. I have to wait and see. Yes. Um, oh, I've always said, I think, I think by the time they're 20, a child needs love almost more than air. If they know they've got the unconditional love of both parents, they're a pretty good chance to succeed or become what they're capable of becoming. Great. Um, mm. But anyway, they, their childhood was nothing like mine was. So I'm very curious to see how they're going to turn out. Yes. Good, I hope, obviously. Brian Gardner was famous for his love for boats 
and lavish lunches with a lot of wines and great company. Can you tell us something about it? Well, he did love lunch and he had some very good lunch partners, many of whom are still pretty famous in the motor trade today. Um, I think more than lunch, actually, Dad really liked time with his friends and, mm -hmm. and his mates and what have you. I think I, I mentioned earlier that he, that he lost his father very early, so I think mates and mentors of mates and what have you were a big part of, of his life and people that he admired and looked up to and he loved spending time with them. Um, he did often used to go to lunches that would end well in the night. I mean, even when I was in nightlife, sometimes he'd turn up at a place I was working at sort of midnight, having come from lunch. Um, he's also a bit famous for, for having a little sleep while he was talking to you at lunch. He could literally doze off for five minutes and then he'd just pick up, wake up and pick up the conversation. And it was on the track. Has Absolutely. lost the track. At meetings he used to do it. And I'm a, I'm a little bit like that too sometimes. Actually, I was at a very long meeting two days ago in Melbourne and I got a little power naps. But John, <laughs> I'll be very brief that it doesn't happen during the interview. No, I hope, hope not. <laughs> Done. But you know the famous five minutes, mm. or oh, 15 minutes apparently, Picasso used to do 15 minutes mm. until he dropped his brush and then it's like meditation. Yes. You're fresh, ready to go again. Yeah, well, he seemed to be able to do it, and he certainly could stay out a lot later than most people. And in fact, when, uh, when Dad was unwell and, and just before he passed away, whenever I'd go over east, he had many uh, car, car dealer friends uh, from all over Australia, and he was very well thought of. And they, they'd always start the conversation with, I've heard about your dad, and I'm so sorry. He said, geez, I'd love to tell you about the night your dad got hold of me, because he is a bit notorious for destroying a few of the youngsters as well. So, Great. Yeah, good fun. It sounds And the boats, yeah, look, um, he, he, he got a boat very, uh, when I was about seven or eight or something. Um, a lot of memories of, you know, family weekends at Rotnest, and then Dad went on to own the Rotnest Hotel and did actually, um, was partners in the Rotnest General Store there at one stage. Mm -hmm. So we all had a great affection for Rotnest, and it's a lovely place for your children uh, and, and family and that to spend together. Um, so, you know, he always liked his boats and always looked after them very carefully and, and what have you. Didn't like, didn't like the kids fishing off the back of his boat much he, <laughs> and those sorts of things. He wasn't a big participator in that sort of stuff. But, look, it was a, it's a great time to spend together. You're on 40 foot together, the whole family, and you're together. So, and yeah. where is this famous boat your dad has um, furnished with Versace, correct? Oh, it, it was actually like that when he bought it. He didn't make yeah, all okay. those decisions. Is and it it's still down, around? Down, down in Fremantle, yeah. Is it still mm. around? Yes, it is. Do you use it? No, no. No. That was very much his thing, so we, we, we do have the boat up for sale. And, um, is yeah, it that, for that, sale? Yeah. Look, that was a station Dad attained in life, not one that I've attained in life, and uh, that, that's way out of my league. John, last lunch with Brian Gardner, with your father. Do you remember? Yes, I do. There's, uh, there's two, actually. One was his 75th birthday, which he wasn't... Um, he wasn't really going to lunch much then, but I organised some of his friends to meet us at Coco's. And then there was a table of, uh, of girls celebrating a birthday next door, so I, I said, listen, if I buy you a nice bottle of champagne, would you mind coming and singing my father happy birthday? So I got a lovely oh, picture nice. of him with these 11 girls that we hadn't met, <laughs> and one of them that's, sitting on his knees. That's a way to birthday. go. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> John, thank you so much for joining Hello Darling Show. And I think we should wrap up and go and have lunch. Sure, why not? And have a nice bottle of what was your dad's favourite wine? Well, he had too many. I, I really, I, there was an Amberley, I think, towards the end that he very much liked. Um, but I tell you what, why don't I choose a nice bottle of champagne for Fantastic. us? Fantastic. John, thank you for coming, and thank you so much for being on Hello Darling Show. Thank you. Of course.